Yo. What it do, y'all? This is Nima Vidati. Over on the other end of the microphone, we got Michael W. Dean. Yeah. This uh-huh. is our live call-in show. So you can give us a call at 307-215-5171. Again, that number is 307-215-5171. What does it do, Michael? Well, you just got back from yet another vacation. The vacation you took after you said... We said, you take more vacations than Obama. And you said, yeah, I'm done for the summer. And then like two hours later, you're like, I'm going on vacation. I had to keep my record from uh, being breakable. So yeah, <laughs> take that, and, Obama. You'll never break it. And I'm not even going to ask you like where you went or what you did because we're all tired of that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Everyone's sitting Fair slaving enough. away in their cubicles and sitting in and their like church rubbing pews. rubbing it in their face. Sitting in their yeah. church pews right now, listening surreptitiously under their, under their little <laughs> robot turd. Yeah. You know, they don't want to hear about you having adventures. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Give me the short version. Uh, we went up to the Guadalupe Mountains. Okay, cool. Uh, so we got some more news here. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, <laughs> right. Bitcoin, we now take Bitcoin. We are stacking mad Bitcoin. And yeah. uh, if you do Bitcoin, back up your wallet. I had a computer failure and thought I lost everything, but didn't because it saved the data, but it couldn't necessarily always do that. So make sure you do that. Uh, someone took up my idea of calling themselves Billy Bitcoin. There's now a Billy Bitcoin on uh, who's a fan, who's a fiend. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> on, the, my, on the Facebooks. And uh, we're getting more into computer security here, and we're going to do some more extended stuff on that, and there's going to be a bunch more stuff on uh, interviews on the gumbo. But uh, we think it's far more important for people to be doing things to protect themselves than just complaining about the daily tyranny of the day. Mm -hmm. Uh, Speaking of which, um, we've been kind of ambivalent about Bitcoin in the past. Have you learned anything recently that makes you feel differently? And how do you feel now? We're going to we're going to be the Donald Trump of Bitcoin, man. We're going to have mega (laughs) mega bitcoins, mega bitcoin. And what's a mega bitcoin, Michael? That's a a million, a million, million. Right now we have right now we have point eight oh one bitcoin, which means about eight tenths of a bitcoin. But that's the beginning of our empire. So if you've got Bitcoins, feed them to the fiends. You can go to our site. There's a link at the top. Uh, there's, there's a thing that says, say, ha- say habla Bitcoin. And uh, yep, yep. yep, you can get But But uh, a Bitcoin's worth more than a dollar, right? What is it now? Like $12, 12. to one yeah. Bitcoin? Yeah. Yeah. Although, from what I understand, it fluctuates. Yeah. In, in well, real time. Money. Everything does. Yeah. The other paper funny money does, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I guess, did you address any of the problems? I guess the, one of the things I was always concerned about Bitcoin is, um, I suppose one of the things that keeps it from being too inflationary is it's tough to mine Bitcoins. Does that change in the future with more uh, computer computing power? Well, it does. And a lot of people jumped in and like bought massive, uh, you know, thought they were going to be the 49ers of it and bought massive uh Arrays Bitcoin of, mining, yeah, computers, equipment. yeah, yeah. Which uh, and like you somebody can, you actually, can view people's Bitcoin rigs online. It's yeah, they have interesting. Bitcoin Bitcoin mining porn, but uh, and and it uses a lot of electricity. Some couple of people actually got their doors kicked in by the cops because they thought they were growing pot, growing pot. Ooh. And in and in Canada, they got their door kicked in when in fact then, they were they were mining Bitcoin so they could buy pot from Silk Road. <laughs> Probably, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Silk Road is on the dark net. Do you know what the dark net is? Ooh, I want to come to the dark net. It's uh, it's what, what what is the dark net? It's the part of the internet that's not publicly viewable. I've been, mm. I've uh, I've had my toe in the dark net, not the illegal part of it, but uh, yeah. Hey, All hey, right. do we hey. have a caller? Hey. No, but Randy England just added as a Skype contact. He's the the actual attorney who's uh, an anarcho capitalist that I interviewed on on the Mumbles. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. So, did you see this search term that some brought someone to our site? Is Mike W. Dean a fake worms eating statist? <laughs> well, I, I don't know how to deconstruct that. So, you don't eat worms and you're not a statist. So, I guess you are a fake worms eating statist since you're not a worm eating. No, I think that they meant. I mean, you know, they obviously didn't hyphenate it correctly because they're <laughs> an, an internet an internet user trying to poke yeah. me, saying you know trolls right. are trolls are all retarded. What they so, meant is, uh, are you fake? Do you eat worms? Are you a statist? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Well, Michael, why don't you address those accusations? I've never eaten a worm. 
You never even, eat a worm. Even, You're not fake. Even, you, not even with tequila you, when I drank tequila. Never ate a worm. Uh, uh. You, you do exist. I, I can vouch for that. I've seen Michael on more than one occasion. In well, person, you know, so he you does know, there's, exist. There's something, there's something called um, temporal object permanence, which is uh, so, uh, something that animals of higher consciousness have. Like, for instance, you know when you leave the room that objects in that room still exist. Cats mm-hmm. do not. Cats do not have that power. <laughs> ah. Which is kind of why they're fascinated with everything all the time. So, hmm, hmm. Are so is sure that related to that dog uh, that dog IQ test you can do where you show them a ball and then you put the ball under the cup and see if they'll figure out the cup the ball is under the cup? Yeah, but they could also do it by the smell. You know, oh, okay. Just because cat a dog can't see something doesn't mean they can't smell it. I mean, if they can smell, hmm. you know, a roach in a in a shipment of. <laughs> bubbles they could smell that yeah 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 okay yeah um so the question is do i know you exist because i'm not in the room with you right now yeah hmm i suppose you could have been taken over by the government and and turned into a drone or i'm speaking to your voice downloaded into a computer that's like a a software approximation of what michael would say so i I guess i don't know for sure that you exist currently so you think i've been weaponized you think i'm a michael of weapons destruction i I don't mwd I don't think that, but I, I guess from where I'm sitting right now, it's impossible to rule it out completely. It's getting kind of existential for me, man. <laughs> so <laughs> you you went there. I didn't go there. You went there. So a stamp act. Read this about stamp acts. This is pretty awesome. You know, like uh, how they regulate marijuana and uh, guns. This is about the origin of the stamp act. You got it there? Yes. I do. A stamp act is any legislation that requires a tax to be paid on the transfers of certain documents. Those that pay the tax receive an official stamp on their documents, making them legal documents. The taxes raised under a stamp act are called stamp duty. This system of taxation was first devised in the Netherlands in 1624 after a public competition to find a new form of tax. (laughs) That's the part I liked. I wanted to read it. Like That is so square, man. Gee, honey, did you see this? I'm going to enter this competition to come up with a new form of tax. Who would enter that? Wow, wow, wow. We're, we're yes. meeting fake state, statist fakes. <laughs> it's like the slaves having a competition to see who could design the best whip. The best shackle. I would like to be whipped. Yes, yes. A nice, comfy, fuzzy shackle. That's what I'm... That's what I'm <laughs> Wow, wow. In 1624, huh? That's so long ago. I didn't know it, was, yeah. it, it dated back that Well, far. the Dutch the Dutch are, uh, you know, I mean, your people invented the state, pretty much. My people, yeah. You're talking about the, per, the Persian Yeah, the Persians, in, the Persians invented the state. Um, Arabs invented mathematics and coffee, which is pretty cool. Uh, but um, uh, the, the, Dutch invented, um, the Dutch invented, like, tax stamps and corporations. I, I want to deflect here, being a Persian, because because according to Ben Stone, theorizes uh, again, it's just a theory; it's not substantiated that Jericho was the first state, which wouldn't be Persian, but it'd be in the same general region. But mm, okay, yeah, the Arabs- I, I, I guess I, the Persians <laughs> did do a lot to advance the state. They they invented um, what they call satraps, which are jurisdictions where you could have you know a satrapy or somebody to govern, so the empire could expand further and still have somebody local to tyrannize and uh, be the boots on the ground, so to speak. Um, roads too. Uh, roads were roads. very greatly advanced by the Persian Empire, so roads. the statists loved the roads, and the Persians did help to do that. So statists, you should like Iran. <laughs> well, you should like coffee too, because coffee drove a lot of good things, also, which ended up being used for drones. But the Arabs invented coffee cultivation, and shortly after they started drinking it, they invented mathematics and the concept of the zero. Uh, and then, late, much later, uh, right before the Industrial Revolution, coffee was brought to England, and then the Industrial Revolution happened. Did we talk about this before? Uh, no, I don't think we have talked about it before. Yeah. So. Huh. So and then you, you can you credit you, know, you credit coffee with the industrial Re- for the industrial yeah. revolution. Yeah, and then you know you combine coffee and math. I mean, the industrial revolution and mathematics, and eventually you end up with drones. So coffee's <laughs> fault. <laughs> so the Arabs made their own bed, and now they must sleep in it while a hellfire missile goes through their window. Ugh, ew. That's that's dark. That's dark. That's man. dark net stuff. <laughs> it's right. not darkness, though. We, we apologize for ourselves, but please do um, hang on. We're going to have plenty more fiends coming up for you here. We're going to sell you some stuff now. Yeah, yeah. Worms. Worms. 
Yes. Michael asks, can he start talking to Nima again? Yes, you can start talking to Nima again. And um, if you're a listener and you want to talk to Nima again. I was complaining about your vacations. Michael's just bitter. But uh, if you want to be... Go ahead, man. Go ahead. Talk. Sure. Give out the number. I will. It's 307-215-5171. Please call us. Please. Or Skype right, the Michael. username Kitty Feet One. So, oh yeah. Or so email to- Talk Back Freedom Fe- uh, Talk Back at FreedomFiends That's it. Or Rapid Share, uh, Retro PG- Share, Retro Share PGP Key at one four six dash eight two three four five six seven one eight nine two three four five six nine zero zero one zero one zero one one one. <laughs> we'll talk about retro share next Wednesday, but uh, retro share okay, is a yeah, way we, to. We should spend some more time on that. It's a private way to email somebody without going through email servers. It's peer to peer emailing. It's pretty cool. Yes, it is awesome. So Nima, what's up? I turned down a thousand dollars of easy money this week. Why would you do that, Michael? Uh, because a politician has asked me to make another TV ad for him. The same guy that I made one for two uh... years ago. Okay, okay. In that in that case, I don't. Well, yeah, I guess I don't blame you. I mean, if you don't want to feel like you're dirty after doing work, then don't take jobs that would make you feel dirty. So yeah, yeah okay. I said I, I wish you luck, it. but I'm not doing commercials for any politicians ever. I'm done with that game. <laughs> I've retired. <laughs> I, have. I have. I don't want to follow in Carl Rove's footsteps. I don't, man. I don't want to be the Frank Luntz of Wyoming. Yeah. <laughs> And you uh, know how did how, how did this politician take that? Was he like, but but we could defeat no, the Democrats? Didn't write back. Well, he's running unopposed okay. too, so he'll be fine. Uh, <laughs> what does he want an ad then? I know. I know. Well, well, also, is it is it more than just the the philosophical purity, or is it also the fact that um, this politician personally lets you down with the way he acted in office? Uh it's more that I don't want to feel responsible for a politician letting me down. It's more like I feel like if I do work for somebody, I'm backing whatever they do, and I can't back what yeah. any politicians do. It's really less about him, although, you know, kind of like not him in particular, but being involved in Wyoming politics made me an anarchist. But, it was, you know, being involved in politics anywhere would have made me an anarchist at this point. But uh, Right. You know, you're non-bi- hating the game, not the player. Right, right. I'd still, I'd yeah. still go. You know, shooting bunnies with that guy or something. But um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Well, good move. Um, a good example of how to how to advance liberty through your personal actions in your own life. Don't yeah. don't take jobs that that further the state. Unless, I mean. I guess in the end, self preservation is more important. So if you're starving, I mean, yeah, it, yeah, it's you know, people is, people's integrity is based on how hungry they are. You know, if I were, <laughs> if I were like, you know, one one, if I were if I were about to get evicted or something, and and the money did it, I might have done it because I feel like I can do more work from right. from a house than from the library and the street. Right. But uh, right, and I've been homeless. Just like a vegetarian would maybe kill a or or a Muslim would kill a pig if they were stranded on a desert island and starving. Yeah, you know, but I'm not rolling in the dough too. I mean, a thousand dollars would be friggin' nice. I could go buy some things, but um, yeah. So I was I was comfortable enough to turn it down. I guess is what it comes down to. Everyone's got their price. Would you buy more guns or what is uh, Michael W. Dean? I've stopped for talking now? about what I buy now. I, I'm trying. I'm getting more into security, <laughs> man. I'm getting to the point okay. where it's like okay. I don't even know if I want to do a podcast. <laughs> and it's not a chilling effect. It's more like, yeah, dude. I've been standing on a on a street corner yelling my business for years. Speaking of which, if you'd like to read a totally, um, well, there's there's a I did an interview with uh, Dale. Dale uh, Everett from Flaming Freedom on the Anarchy Gumbo, kittyfeet.com if you want to check it out, which he described on his own podcast as uh, a TMI interview. <laughs> Those are the best, aren't I they? I know. And uh, if you want to read a TMI book I wrote, it was the first book I wrote. It's called uh, Starving and a Company of Beautiful Women. Uh, people have been asking me about it lately. It's on paperback, but it's way out of print. came out in 2000. This paperback's used for a lot of money on Amazon, but I'm going to put up the PDF in the show notes of this episode. Yes. And this episode is called Stacking Mad Bitcoin, Bitches. Oh, yeah. And that's our big uh, finger flipping the bird at IP. But, um, you know, you could also show some love and donate to Michael. I'm sure he would appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> nah, donate to the fiends, man. We're coming. Okay, okay. 
We sure we're a commune. <laughs> There's no property in the fiendom. No, well, there is, but no. <laughs> you, you, I agreed to, to give you your one third <laughs> for the work you do. Where's my fair share, Michael? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's well, you know, I do about sixty times as much hours as you do, but you are you, and that makes it important. <laughs> well, I've been uh, having attendance problems. So vacations yeah, you've been are over. A, you've been stealing from the fiends, man. <laughs> I can't even get you on the phone or the emails for weeks at a time sometimes. Yeah, well, it, when you're in the wilderness, it's hard to get phone calls. And that's why you go to the wilderness, and that's why I never do. Yeah, yeah. Although, you never feel like you just – I guess we've had this conversation before, but – you, you don't think you'll ever feel like you just want to get away and go to an island or a mountain. I have a big backyard, man. Not deal with I just, anybody. I, for, I just go in the days. backyard. I did that yesterday. I went in the backyard and laid in the sun with my cat for almost forty-five minutes. That was my vacation. Then I came back in and got on the computer. Okay. okay. To help uh, spread liberty. You know. Yeah. Speaking of which, we're looking for someone who's a committed fan who doesn't want to be committed for being a fan, but um, knows how to <laughs> use BitTorrent and wants to start putting either individual episodes or zips of our episodes up on pirate Bay and BitTorrent and all the BitTorrent places and seeding it until it's got and promote, will it promote it. But, um, I've been talking to these, uh, really smart cracker hacker dudes, uh, and cap dudes. Um, how, how do you know they're crackers if they're so secure? I don't know if they're crackers. <laughs> oh, crackers. You mean that's, like white? That's no, racist. Crackers was that's not, kinda, that's not what you meant. Kinda, they're actually white hat hackers. If you want to talk about whiteness, but, um, they're uh, security guys. Really wait, 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 wait. De define define that term. I've never heard that. White white hat hackers. Yeah, it's hackers that don't you know break crap that like do ah. security work for other people. They they ah, white hat hackers okay. are hackers that are paid to keep black hat hackers out. You know, like companies will they, hire. They them. they hack only in self defense or defense <laughs> yeah yeah somebody they're contracting exactly for. exactly okay. and uh, yeah. And they basically said, you know, if the government wants to shut you down, it doesn't care. They don't care that, you know, they, they don't just take your domain name. They take your servers. They take the whole rack of servers. And it's like, I said, how can that be prevented? And they're like, well, you get everything up on, 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 on Bitcoin, uh, BitTorrent. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I wonder, too, because maybe it was a joke, but they joked about the Pirate Bay folks joked about using drones to, to fly their servers in the air so they'd be unreachable. Uh, which I guess they wouldn't because governments are that's, pretty much have a monopoly on airspace. Yeah, but that's the servers of the torrent. And, you know, we can actually serve the torrents and people can email the torrent to people. And then when you put it on, when you download it and then and then you seed it, you are the server. And the server is right. everyone, every fiend around the world that's serving it. And they can't take them all out. Right. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Well, excellent. Um so I guess the, the moral of the story is if you want something that's impenetrable or can't be defeated by goons coming in and breaking up your server, put it on BitTorrent. Well, and we've got, well, share it with everybody. That's the point. You get everybody to share it instead of one person to share it. You decentralize. Ah, excellent. So we're going to go right. sell some more stuff, man. Yeah, let's do it. Let's sell some stuff. It's about to be sold. <laughs> <laughs> want to search porn in private? Or maybe you just want to talk to your friends without some tech goon hired off a pizza box snooping through your private thoughts. MetroPipe VPN is a secure computing service operated by privacy-loving anarcho-capitalists. Accounts can be had for as little as $7.50 a month. They take Bitcoin, don't keep any logs, and hate nanny intrusions as much as you do. Get a 25% discount by going to metropipe.net slash fiends. That's metropipe.net slash fiends. Would you like to advertise your product or service to a large built-in audience of liberty-loving consumers who truly dig the free market? Freedom Fiends is now selling ad space. Slots are reasonably priced, but limited, so contact us today. Write the fiends at talkback at freedomfiends.com. That's talkback at freedomfiends.com. Yo, yeah. it's the fiends. Yeah. What do you do? All right. What's up, man? Chilling. So should we give out the number? Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Uh, you can call us. 
The Fiends live at 307-215-5171. Go ahead and do it. I dare you. I double dog dare you. Yeah. I heard that um, anarchist superstar Mickey Darling is going to call in. Ah. Excellent. She's named, she's named after a really filthy line in a filthy Prince song. Hmm. I don't know if her I like parents Prince. named it. I don't know if her parents I named it. I don't know if I can now. recall the line. What's the line? Something about uh, masturbating with a magazine in a hotel lobby. I think. <laughs> okay. I think I, I love Prince. Prince is great, man. Prince is yeah, great. Yeah. You can't, you can't be into funky music like you, you know, like you can't be into hip hop and not love Prince, I think. I probably agree. I yeah. agree. Although I've heard it said uh, from a friend of mine that uh, if you like Prince more than Michael Jackson, that means you like sex more than you like music. Really? <laughs> I think it means you like adult women more than you like little boys. <laughs> Ouch. Burn. Burn. Wait, is that is that I, saying is that saying that like Michael Jackson's music is more musical than Prince's music? Um, Fiend phone. I guess. Fiend yeah, phone. I guess. Do you don't feel Fiend that way? Phone. Fiend phone. No, I like Prince's music I, better. Fiend. Hey, okay. this is Chandler. This is. What's up, guys? What's up, Chandler? Ah, Nikki up, missed man? her chance to call in. Ah, wait. Hey, can we uh, have you call back? We got a star no calling in here. Not a star, yep. but a woman. Women never call in. All right. All right, cool. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> hey, Nikki Darling, what's up? Worms. <laughs> Worms. Worms. I think you're the third woman to ever call into this show other than Nima's mother and Nima's sister. Oh, good. You need more <laughs> vagina on the show. <laughs> need Tell more it. vagina in everything. Can you speak a little louder there, Nikki, or I'm having trouble hearing you? You're all Let me turn up my volume. Can you hear that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. What's on your mind today? I said uh, you said you were going to call in. You didn't want to call in because uh, you're empty-headed, and I said I like that in a woman, and you said you liked that, so you called in. What's up? Yeah, I am feeling a little empty-headed, but, um, well, first of all, I just want to tell you guys that the Lemonade Freedom Day and Raw Milk Day went excellent yesterday. Yes. It was headed up by Eddie Free and Robert Fernandez, and we had a whole cast of characters out there, Derek J., um, Pete Ayer, um, just all those people were out there, all the activists. It was really awesome. No cops. They did not even come by at all. We had a few people... A few tourists drove by and yelled Obama at us. <laughs> Obama will protect us from the raw milk. Wow. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, and we were at dinner afterwards, and a lady saw Danny Panzella's T-shirt that said, My Body, My Choice. And she came up and said, Oh, that's really cool. Let me just show you my new iPhone cover. And she pulled it out, and it said Obama 2012 on it. And Danny was like, oh, no, I don't think you understand us. And then after we were paying our bill, she came up again and said, hey, New Jersey boy, check out my phone. Ha, 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 ha. And we all were like, boo. We we're just like booing at the lady. She, women must be really stupid to think that. Uh, <laughs> they, <laughs> I love that beginning. Yeah. yeah we're politically yeah, great, correct great, here. Great women way to must start be, that comment. Women must be really stupid to think they need a great man to let them do what they want with their bodies. <laughs> Exactly. That's what everyone said. I mean, everyone at our table was like, yeah, I guess Obama owns your bo body, lady, you know, and you're Take really me. happy. <laughs> He's letting you do what you want with your body now. Woohoo. But we were kind of overpowered by a feminist protest that was going on on the Capitol lawn as well. So, Are you a feminist? No. No? I mean, I love being a woman and I love women, but I think that all rights are human rights, not just women's rights, African American Worms. rights or whatever, you know? Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. I like that in a woman. Yeah. So, but one thing I did want to talk about was like internet panhandling. I don't know how you guys feel about panhandling in general. Well, but we kind of do it, but we also kind of hate it. I mean, we do it in a kind of tongue in cheek way and our world won't end if we don't get nickels and dimes. But I get really offended when I see like I played in rock bands and I went out and worked and people paid us to starve to death. And now it's like, you know, people, people put up uh, Kickstarter things and say like finance our tour and I'm like what you want me to work and send you money so you can go out and bang chicks all across the country and play your <laughs> crappy music no way well you guys provide a service and therefore if people feel it's worth donating to then yeah. they can 
But um, recently, well, we, we see the difference as we're, we're like the guy on the street corner playing guitar or saxophone with a hat. With the tip jar. So when we'd yeah. ask for doni- exactly. donations, it's a tip jar kind of thing. Yeah, you guys don't just have a sign that says, I need a bottle of booze, give me money. Yeah, Here. and I always, I would only ever give booze to panhandlers that um, entertain me. Like, you know, uh, there was this guy in San Francisco that I used to give money to sometimes because he had the funniest sign I've ever seen. It was a black dude, and he said, uh, he had a sign that said, Donate to the United Negro Pizza Fund. <laughs> that was worth a buck. Yeah, good lines are kind of funny. Yeah, so uh, yeah, I agree with that. But I wanted to talk about something that I was involved in recently that ruined my entire week. And I'm on a, you know how I use e cigarettes. So I'm on an online vaping network yeah. sort of television thing. Find us a new advertiser. We lost Vaporsmiths and I'm I am vaping my second to the last cartomizer as we speak. So get on there and get someone to give the fiends money to advertise their uh, <laughs> e-cigs if you can, please. Uh, definitely third do party that. panhandling. Yes. I, I can send you some cartomizers if you're really hard up to Nah, nah, I like cigarettes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we want advertisers. Okay, I yeah, can find out. But thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I have plenty of cartomizers. So anyway, but anyway, so this guy, one of the hosts on the network, he came forth and said, I've been laid off of my job. I, ha- I have no money. I'm going to be evicted on Sunday. So me and a friend went up to Philly. We picked him up. I brought him down to my house. I let him stay here with the intention that within a week he was going to get out and our vaping network was going to do a fundraiser for him online where people were going to donate items. We were going to f- <clears throat> raffle them off, and he was going to make a lot of money for doing nothing. So this guy came to my house. And he slept all day. He didn't take his dog out. His dog shit all over my ah, floor. He yeah. didn't offer to help. I fed him three meals a day. I cooked. I brought it, you know, to him every morning. No thank you. No money. No nothing in return. And he got five hundred dollars in cash by the time he left. And he found a ride down to Florida, so he hardly spent a dime. And he's going to stay with more people. And it's just this whole mentality of like <laughs> online, like, oh, I lost my job. Well. I think it's better than stealing or doing it by proxy through government. But, uh, you know, when I was younger, we had a name for that. It was bums. You know, a couch surfer mm-hmm. turns into a bum after three days. And anybody who is homeless or wants to not work, I'll give you some advice that this guy should have had before he stayed at your house. My sister told me this when I was a little kid when she got back from being an exchange student in South Africa. She said, you know, Michael, you can stay anywhere in the world you want rent free as long as you can do dishes without being asked and converse intelligently in the native tongue. And it sounds like this guy didn't either. No, he didn't offer to help do anything. Unfortunately, he blamed a lot of it on his depression and he's also severely obese. So that the, the combination was terrible. Wow. So, yeah, it was pretty bad. And so I also see a lot of this kind of in the liberty community too, like with you know, online on Facebook, people just kind of begging for money and Well, I see it even with people who are providing who are doing something cool. Like I see a lot of filmmakers now begging for money online, like here's our trailer, help us get the film finished. And I'm like when I was your age, when I started making digital film before you could hold a cell phone camera back in 1998, uh I financed it myself. I got people to donate, but I didn't like hold it hostage and say like, this can't get made. Liberty will not be progressed if you don't know, donate. Yeah, I get pretty sick of a lot of it. There's a lot of people who, uh, you know, it's, uh, there's, there's better ways to run your life. Well, if, if no. you really are passionate about your art, uh, get a part-time job, deliver pizzas, yeah, wait man. tables, and I make mean, your art. How many of the greatest, you know, novelists worked day jobs. I mean, Hemingway was a newspaper writer and war correspondent uh, and like went into battle and got shot at. He wasn't shooting, but he was in battles being a war correspondent to finance his book writing before it really took off. He was... You well, that's know, almost uh, worse because he can't shoot back. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, if you look at, uh, you know, um, the guy that wrote, uh, what's the Las Vegas one that Johnny Depp started in the movie? Oh, Fear Loathing? Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, shit. This yeah. That guy, yeah, that guy was a Hunter, a, a, Hunter, S. Hunter S. Thompson was a newspaper writer. Hey, do you want to stick around and talk some more after we sell some more stuff here, Nikki? Sure. All right, cool. We like selling stuff. We're not begging, we're selling. I know. Yeah, yeah. They'll probably pay our begging ad right now. Play our begging ad. We're not saying the freedom. <laughs> they did. The yep, path. they <laughs> are. <laughs> Listen to this. That's a good one. Can you hear this, Nikki? If you want to put your voluntarist yeah. money where your mouth is, <laughs> consider making a donation to the <laughs> 
Go to freedomfiends.com and click on the spinning coin. On That's embarrassing. Post. Then make a one-time gift via oh my PayPal God. or set up a monthly contribution of as little as $3. <laughs> Giving to the Freedom Fiends helps advance education Hypocrite. and horizontal liberation oh, we throughout gotta the world. Oh, we got to address that when we come back. We work hard, yeah, yeah. so send us some money. <laughs> be able to earn an honest living Should decisions on what you put in your body be left up to people whose very job depends on keeping certain plants illegal? Or do you believe in freedom of ingestion? The Genome Project is a cannabis science community founded by a leading DNA scientist. We fight ignorance with information. We don't have all of the answers, but we put all of our proceeds into finding them. If this requires sequencing the genomes of a forbidden plant, we've done it. If it requires leaving the country for the free pursuit of science, we've done that as well. The Genome Project is an ongoing crowdsourced experiment in free pursuit of the truth on cannabinoid sciences. Join us and participate in studying Mary Jane's genome. Get the app by searching Jane-Ohm on iTunes. The app is only $1.99 and all proceeds go to furthering and disseminating scientific truth. You must be 17 or older to download the app. Search Jane-Ohm on iTunes. That's J-A-N-E-O-M-E. -E. Yeah, about a woman in Texas. Do you want to go ahead and start over again? Nah, I don't want to talk about the tyranny today. I want to talk about Nikki. What's up, Nikki? <laughs> right. What's up? So you're not allowed to say, like, curse words on the show, right? Fuck no. Do not fucking swear on our fucking podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought you weren't allowed to on L on LRN. Says who? We... Who's we our don't boss? Know, man. Who's our boss? We don't know. Actually, we don't. <laughs> we have no idea. Just, just do, okay. do whatever you feel like. It, it's freedom here at Freedom. Fields. I'm naked. <laughs> nice. Okay. I'm in my. It's not nice. I'm 48, man. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> You're really not that bad, Mike. <laughs> Thanks, young lady. <laughs> You're Thanks, young lady. Anyway, you guys do work for your donations that you get. I would donate because I love the service that you provide. So. Oh, you know, I, we have to mention the embarrassment of me going off on, I think these youngsters begging for money are horrible. And then it's like the ad comes on. It's like, hi, send Freedom Fiends money because we work hard. <laughs> <laughs> but but again, we're not, we're not holding it hostage. We're not saying donate or you don't won't get to hear yeah. the next Freedom Fiends episode. Yeah. I mean, literally, like that's our expenses are between 30 and 40 bucks a month right now. Um if we never got another cent in, I'd pay that. I wouldn't take any food off my table. And, you know, if Nima ever gets a job, he'd chip in on it. Uh, <laughs> we like getting money and it allows us to do more things. And if we got a bunch of money, we'd probably start taking out ads on like Free Talk Live does on uh, Google. But, you know, we we put it back into the cast. But we don't need your money. We just want your money. Whereas these young whippersnappers today, let me tell you, if you really want to finance something, do it right. Do what I did on my first movie. I got a $5,000 grant from a private foundation for my first movie. Yeah, there um, you go. Yeah, don't don't hit your friends up for nickels and dimes. Go to foundationcenter.org, set up an account. I believe it's foundationcenter.org. There's something called the Foundation Center. You set up an account and you can go through their uh, their archives and do searches based on like people foundations that give money to certain things now you're gonna have a lot better chance funding a movie that's about like you know left-handed lib left-handed liberal lesbian <laughs> from dominica who uh are single mothers and fighting for obama from most of these agencies than you are you know doing something about why we need to get rid of fiat currency but uh not all of them. I mean, some of them are like the Ford Foundation and stuff and the Koch brothers and who knows what else. But, you know, you could get – you don't need to beg for nickels and dimes. Write a fucking treatment and write a, a proposal and do it right. And uh, Foundation Center will tell you how to do that, you damn yeah. cyber hippies bums. Yeah, that's a really good idea. <laughs> did Did you hear about Paul Fest coming up? No. It's, no, it's what's in that? Tampa. It's a big week-long Ron Paul Fest. Ew. and. One of the key speakers is somebody that you mentioned on your last podcast, which was really funny. And there's a win a date with him. Oh, <laughs> what's his name? Uh, I, can't I think, remember his I, think name. I know who Adam, you're talking about. Adam Kokesh. Yeah, I didn't really want to say his name. So but he, he's he's auctioning himself off. Yes, for a date with Adam Kokesh. <laughs> you could not pay me. Nah, I'm sorry. <laughs> no. I just thought that was funny, and they're, they're auctioning off like a guitar and. You know, some random things. I he'll just, do you, too. If you win the date, he'll do you. I don't know. <laughs> that guy's a poon hound, man. 
<laughs> wow. I know wow. things. I know inside things. Okay. Oh, I could probably tell you some more then later on off Did air. Did you do them? No. Okay. Tell me Never. more. <laughs> make up make up fake names and tell me more. No, I can't. I can't spread people's business on. <laughs> <laughs> I can, but I no. won't. No, but so, so what what's the Paul Fest for? Are, are people not over politics yet? Is, <laughs> is that what's going on? <laughs> exactly. Uh well, they're, you know how they're doing the march, the march on the RNC, the uh, veterans for Ron Paul. I just pimped them. I shouldn't have, but um, yeah, that's they're okay. what they're doing. They're going to march, and they're also doing a big rally, and people are getting together. It's going to be like a Ron Paul pork fest or something. It's but better with, than veterans for let's kill more brown people. I mean, come on, it's yeah, it's like, halfway there. Yeah, and Adam, like, wait, Adam's an anarchist, and he's speaking at this thing. He's like anarchist light. What's his deal, man? Well, I don't. He did say he wanted to be the anarchist president, and that ah. made Chortle ah. a lot. So <laughs> whatever. Chortle. I like that word. Yeah, whatever yeah. he wants to do, whatever. I don't care. That's fine. Yeah. You know, yeah. I just don't pay yeah. attention to it anymore. Well, why'd you bring it up then? <laughs> well, no, because I thought you guys would find <laughs> a live date with him. Yes, that yes, is that is hilarious. That is, that I, is I do funny. appreciate. It. I'm just razzing you. I'm just okay. razzing you. We had to win a date with the fiends, and uh, a man won and went out to lunch with Nemo. It wasn't a gay thing. It was just a, you know, they hung out. It was a bromance. Yeah, yeah. A, a bromance. bromance. It totally was a bromance. Yeah. That's no, it was awesome. awesome. Oh, I forgot to mention your kid brother was there yesterday, too. Um, Garrett. My kid brother? Yeah, Garrett. Uh, <laughs> and Garrett is yeah. Full woman, Annie. And his full woman, Annie? What? No, it's beautiful. Oh. His <laughs> she said full, like she was full of raw milk. You know, I used to drink raw milk when I was a kid. I, it's funny because everyone's like discovering it now. And like I had it when I was a kid, didn't really like it. We'd go to my aunt's house, you know, 10 miles away at a farm. And uh, I'd drink it. I'd be, the first time I had it, I was like, what's this this chunky stuff on top of this milk? And they're like, that's cream. This is unpasteurized raw milk. I'm like, okay. And I kind of learned to like it. And I remember one time when I was about eight there, I was looking out the window and I was like, Mommy, Daddy, the cows are trying to jump on each other. <laughs> and then they told me how life works. It was kind of cool. I learned at a farm. Yeah. Well, I think raw milk is pretty good for you. I've done some research online. And I don't know. You can't get it here, though. So. I'm stopping milk. I'm d I'm gonna, I'm, uh, my wife's out shopping right now for us to start the paleo diet. Ah, that's oh, really? Great. Yeah, I stopped, I stopped milk two days ago, which is probably why I'm so cranky. I'm going through a troll. I drink you, about you a gallon drink, of milk a day, man. Yeah. Yeah. And and I remember working on Guns and Weed with you, and you would always have – you would fill up half a giant beer mug, like a 24-ounce beer mug, <laughs> half with milk and half with coffee, and you drink like four of those a day. <laughs> four of those a morning. Yeah. Well, you got to get your coffee too on paleo, hey, right? Hey, Eddie Freeze calling. Um, oh. Should we okay. take him? Yes. Yeah, I'm going to take him. Thanks for calling in, man. Call in any time, please. We okay. liked it. Okay. Hello, Eddie Free. Eddie Free's hey got a video on. I'm looking at Eddie Free. Get up a little higher. I can only see your nose up. Yeah. Yeah. You look like a young, heck, sexy Alex Jones, Eddie. Can you see hey, him? I like that. Nima, We're see? going double, triple, <laughs> triple viral. I kind of look like Alex Jones, too. People confuse me with him. I think in the Guns and Weed movie, when I'm playing the bad cop, I really look like Alex Jones. <laughs> you actually do. You actually do. But in the, in the younger years of Alex Jones. Yeah. Here, you want to see me? No, but I'll turn me on. Let me get the camera okay. working here. I really must. If you really ah, must, okay, okay. Fuck you. So Ed, not... Eddie's got his video on. Here you go. Can you see me? Yes, yo, look yo, at that yo. sexy man. Yo, what's up, man? <laughs> Show you my oh, Ed, yeah. Eddie, is, my, is Michael, is Michael really bellies. naked? Let's bump Was he lying bellies. or is he really naked? He's showing me his bare chest. Oh, oh I, I guess I'll, so. I'll get naked. Here, I'll get naked for oh, oh, he's taking it off right. now. Look <laughs> wow. at that. Wow. Yeah. Come on, man. Come on. Come on. Come on, motherfucker. Oh, my God. Please, we're, we're, be we're, we're becoming the Howard Stern of Liberty Media, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> we are. Come on, man. Let's <laughs> bump bellies. Nice. Bump bellies, Eddie. Come on. All right. Oh, hold no. on. Eddie and I both have, like, good upper body strength and then bellies. Come on. There it is. You, you know, I... I think I will go on another vacation. <laughs> you got a bad Quaker t-shirt on there, man, huh? You like that? Yeah, where'd you get that? Man, listen, Kai showed up to the uh, Lemonade Freedom Day yesterday, and uh, so she gave me one. 
Cool. I heard Kai t- is telling people never to give me her phone number, which I've never thought of wanting her phone number, but now I kind of want it because she doesn't want me to call her at four in the morning and ask her to podcast like I do with her dad. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> what, Nima? I, I, I was saying, I think she was just making fun of the fact that you call her dad at three and four a.m. <laughs> Yeah, and I'd never call anybody who doesn't want me to call them. That's a property rights issue, but yes, I will make yes. fun of them on the internet about it. My- Michael's like a stray cat when it comes to podcasting. If you podcast with them once, he'll always be, be- knocking at your doors. Hey, you want a podcast? You want a podcast? <laughs> Yo. Like well, scratching. I called a, I called a friend of mine one time. I, I, you know, you can go online and get those soundboards of different celebrities. Holy cow, that is sweet. What is that there, Michael? That is a 38 Special Revolver from uh, Charter Arms. It's a three. Uh, it weighs 15 ounces loaded. It's made of air, airplane titanium aluminum. Yeah, I like the two tone. That's awesome. Yeah. They have pimp versions of it that are like purple and gold too. And they have a pink one for the ladies in that model. It's the same gum, but it's pink and it's called the Cougar. Oh, right on. Hey, have you seen uh, the the uh, Hello Kitty AK-47s? Yeah. <laughs> no, Those I haven't. Those are... Where can I get Michael one? Michael said it like, yeah. Nah. Whoa. Yeah. Was that M1? I can't tell. No, it's uh, um. Well, let me make sure it's not loaded. Okay. No, nah, that's a... Uh, What's the Kami guns, Nima? Mosin Nagant. Mosin Nagant. Yeah. 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 Mosin Nagant. Yeah. You gonna stay on yeah, for? They're, they're, uh, you stay on cheap. for more here, Eddie? Yeah, absolutely. All right. Cool. Cool. You look sexy. We're gonna go pay the bills. They're kind of tired. We'll have Eddie on sexy. after. Yeah. Uh, I'm tired as hell. I'm on one hour of sleep. Cool. Do you want to just sleep and leave the camera on? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> he wants to watch you. <laughs> Worms. No, I think Michael wants to- Not good. Yeah. Yo. Yo. It's the fiends live. It's the fiends really uh, live and naked and exposed. We just got a an email that said that um, when we, it's not going to the commercial. So if Ian's listening, well, Ian would know. I better write Ian. Uh, they're not hearing the commercials. They're hearing us. God, what are we saying? I mean, I I think I said some things like. Fuck people. I don't care about people. I just want them to send me money. They're all a bunch of fucking <laughs> insignificant worms, man. Didn't I say that? Uh, I think you said that. I don't, I don't know. know. I what did I say? Wow. We said some harsh stuff, man. So the world really knows the real Eddie real Free and Michael Dean and Nima Vidati and what we say when we think no one's... We basically just bugged our own houses without knowing it. All right. Yeah. <sighs> well, where do we go from there? I'm going to write her. <laughs> that sucks. So, Diana, how embarrassing was it? Write me on the Facebooks and tell me. Yeah. So, um, talk about, okay. uh, let's do a save here. Uh, talk about what happened yesterday there, there, Eddie. Man, it was awesome. We uh, we set up, you know, it, it by at 12 o'clock, we probably had, um, I don't know, maybe about 50 people there. It grew to uh, 100, easily 100 people showed up. And then there were tourists coming in. Uh, we brought in the lemonade, we brought in milk, and we sold it. We were, we were um, I guess we got, we got, people were buying milk from us with uh, silver. They were even using the Shire silver cards. Um, I got some dime cards. And of course they paid with the fiat money. Um, we made over $200 and uh, you know, 19 the the dollar in 1913 we made the equivalent of four thousand dollars <laughs> that day to uh to and, and you know we're going to give it to the um the farmers that donated and then of course some of the activists that uh, traveled uh to help us with this event so uh but let me tell you man um i didn't see any cops nothing i swear last week there must have been men on telephones screaming at each other all through the FDA building wondering what the hell they were going to do. And they decided that they were going to stand down and that they didn't want, you know, any more light shed on, on, on the aggression that they're committing against all these uh, all these farmers. I'm yeah, still it sounds like to, that I'm, to me. I'm still trying to think about what we said between the breaks. <laughs> oh, oh, let, let, it, let, it, let it go. I, I'm let starting it go. to remember what we said. Did you, did I, I think I said, I think I said, I don't give a shit about this libertarian stuff. I'm just in it for the money and the bitches, man. <laughs> Fuck these idiots. They're all a bunch of fucking zombies. Dude, didn't everybody I, already knows that. Okay, didn't I say that? <clears throat> you just said it now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry. Go on. Talk about your teat fest. Uh, what else? I don't know what else, man. It was awesome. We had a great time. No police. We uh, we were there for several hours. Uh, there were women and children, mothers, fathers, families. 
um, it was what we were, you know, what we wanted it to be—a celebration, a picnic, and uh, well, I, I want to know ass. how you take how you how do you take the fact that the goons didn't show up and try to bust it up or give you any good video of them tyrannizing you? No, no, no. Do you think that that's no, I, do you think that's I, a you know win? What? No, I think I think what happened yesterday is just as dramatic as seeing uh, something like you know the cops aggressing. What we saw yesterday was a victory. In fact, I just sent you a link to the video that uh, that me and my my uh, my my buddy finished, and um, you know, and that's what it was. It's it was just celebratory. It, it, we had a great time, and and I thought that that was dramatic. I, I, you know, me personally, I'd rather see these victories than uh, see the police bashing down my yeah. friends. You know. Excellent. Excellent. So, so, yeah. So, where, where are you yeah. going to win next, Eddie? What, what, what's next on the, the Eddie Free planning board? Because, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, it does sound kind of like a victory there. Um, any other things in the works along those lines? Well, yeah, well, a lot of times people will ask me, hey, what kind of activism are you going to do next? And usually it's up to the state. It's up to the police. They're going to do something that's going to, you know, piss us off and, you know, we'll end up creating an event around it. But after this, I met so many great activists um, from the just the food freedom side of this. And uh, we're already planning something in September at a farmer's market in um, in, in New York. So uh, we're, we're going to uh, do the same thing again. We're going to exchange um, certain black market um, c- products to uh, to the public. Excellent. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, I yeah. like I like what you do, man. Thanks, man. You, well, good- just, you know, you know, we had Derek J that came down and stayed with me from uh, Derek J's victimless crime spree. He started his tour um, with our event. And uh, so we got some good footage of him, and man, there were just it's so many people were there. Nathan Cox, Meg McLean, Cassie Dill, uh, Pete Air from Coplot.org, um, Clyde Voluntarist from Never Take a Plea. Um, when you see the footage, man, it, it's awesome. It's awesome. It, it's how we all came together, and you know, actually, it was these two different groups. It was you know our kind of um, you know our liberty group that you know those of us that do the civil disobedience and that kind of thing, and then the the food activists, and we all came together and created this just synergy, and uh, you know, we had a much larger l- larger turnout than I actually expected. You know. Do you think a lot of the food activists that maybe weren't uh, voluntarists are sort of starting to get the message and maybe broadening their view of the state infringing on all types of freedoms, not just food freedoms? Yeah, I think so. Least- you know, um, Friday we did a rights workshop where a lot of you know these farmers and and these mothers showed up, and they wouldn't have necessarily you know categorized themselves as as being voluntarists or anything like that, but they at least got to see our side, um, our perspective. So, but you know, Nima, I mean, these things. It takes a little bit. So, you yeah. know, some of these people were probably, you know, exposed to the ideas of, of anarcho-capitalism and voluntarism for the first time. So I know, if anything, um, they left their thinking about uh, about some of this, some of these ideals. Right. You, you planted a seed. Well, that's it, and that's and that's and that's all we can do, you know. Yeah. Sometimes I'll start talking to someone, and they'll and and they'll just you know really just have an argument for every little thing, which is fine. I mean, I can understand that, and I can direct you to sources, but you know, I I, I tend not to waste um, you know throwing my pearls to swine. I mean, if they don't really get the ideas of 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 the non-aggression principle, then you know. Uh, then the fine, you know, maybe that's a wasted seed, but yeah, that, but that's how you do it, man. You, you, you plant seeds. I've had friends come back to me, you know, 10 years after the fact of me telling them something about, I don't know, the federal reserve or whatever. And, you know, say, Eddie, man, you're right. Tell me more about this. So it's vital yeah. that we plant the seeds, Nima. Oh, completely. I agree. I think I think you can nurture the seeds, too. I don't think it's just plant the seed and then walk away. I've got people that come to me and they're like, well, I agree with you on most things. But, you know, how would this work or how would that work? And, you know, usually I'll, it's it's something very specific, like like what would happen if there was a riot in your world? And it's like, I don't know, man, <laughs> it would be solved nonviolently. Uh I, I hope. Um, so, but yeah, I that's think a, there that's is a trip, man. I've had people. I've had friends from high school. You know, when I got on Facebook or whatever. But um, friends that I hadn't even spoken to since high school, and I'd been friends with for you know maybe a couple of years on Facebook, and just out of the blue, they'll send me a question. You know, about you yeah. know, something dealing with a, a liberty issue or or a, uh, a a police accountability issue or something like that. So that always kind of blows me away. Um, and, you know, I forget about who else on my Facebook and looking at the things that I do. 
Yeah, yeah. But at least then you know the seed is at least sprouting. It might not grow to a full-blown anarcho-capitalist plant, but at least it's sprouting. And I, I think that that's always a good sign. When when people are asking questions and just instead of just saying, oh, well, then you'd have an anarchy and there'd be blood in the streets. I think that's encouraging. It is. Well, it's all, yeah, when, when, when someone's ac- asking questions, um, you know, they're, they're definitely involved in or, you know, interested in those are the people to go after. Totally, totally. Yeah. All right, Eddie. Um, anything else you wanted to to mention about the future for Eddie Free or or Freedom or well, anything? Well, I do want to plug my website. Um, I've I've just set it up now, and actually, it's my first website ever. And Welcome to the, the uh, computer <laughs> age, there, Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, I mean, yeah, I've been we're we're over here like in the dark net and stuff, and you're like. I got myself an AOL account. I'm just pulling your leg. What's your email address? <laughs> I'm going to start your... sending you dad spam, so watch <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but anyway, so my website, thevoluntaristexperience.com. So check that out, folks, and I will keep people updated with what I'm doing. And we will link your uh, raw milk thing. Ooh, Kai Vick's calling. We're going to take this, man. She's going to yell Absolutely. at me. Absolutely. Later. Thanks, man. Bye. Thanks, Eddie. Kai Vick, you're on. Hey, uh, so can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. This is the first time I'm using this whole Skype thing. Yeah. Um, so I hear that I've been called out. And <laughs> <I've been narco. laughs> yeah, yeah. I won't call uh, you. I won't call you ever. <laughs> Mike, Michael wants them digits now. You've got, no, it's mostly. You've got I, I just you can call me all you want. I almost never have cell phone service, and when I do, I don't call the phone or I don't answer the phone because I'm a phone a phone. We're gonna keep you on here for uh, after we go sell some things. We're going into a selling block here where we have some anarcho capitalism going on. Yay, selling. Yay. <laughs> Yay. And keep in mind that they can hear us thing. during the commercials for some reason today. So um, yeah, I don't know why that is. Back. We got Freedom Kai Freedom. on the line. What's up, Kai? Hey, everybody. Not Kai, much. Kai is on uh, the Bad Quaker podcast with Ben Stone. Yeah, he's my dad. Yeah, I didn't know that. You know, you guys never used to mention that. When I first started listening to you before I talked to either of you, and I saw pictures of you, I thought he was some like dirty old biker and you were his young girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> that's creepy, too. It is creepy, but that's what I thought. I was like, "Wow, what a weird pairing of people." Well, they they corrected because then then every episode subsequently they like said it four times that after I told only after I told father ben daughter yeah. anarcho capitalist <laughs> podcast team. I probably am the reason they say that. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, we started to mention it more once uh, once I stopped doing the podcast often. Um, once I kind of took a break from it a little bit. Now that I'm only doing it occasionally, we like to mention that. Okay, okay. So what what have you been up to lately, Kai? Um, I'm hanging out in Maryland. I just went to the uh, Raw Milk and Lemonade Freedom Day yesterday. And that was fun. Awesome. Nice. How'd that go? Every, every, everybody we've talked to so far has been there. there. That's like the place to be, I guess. Yeah, well, uh, it was a lot of fun once I actually managed to get there. The getting there portion of it was a little bit hectic, but after yeah, that, yeah. it was fun. And I had to wander you're, you're around a- and try to find the protest because there was a huge women's rights protest taking Ew. place where they kept shouting vagina 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 <laughs> and then to think kind of the of children get through them you have to walk through the anti protest protest where they have giant which is shouting uh, penis 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 <laughs> I was just going to say man. <laughs> no they had giant blown up pictures of aborted fetuses which was you know lovely uh, that's what you want to see on a saturday afternoon uh so we had to get through that, and I kind of think that that may be why we didn't see a whole lot of uh, police action on our on our protest. Is They're you know they busy. were busy monitoring that situation. Why don't they arrest those people with the naked aborted fetus pictures for ultra kitty porn? I don't know. <laughs> I would think they would fetus porn because wow. they are naked children that are even younger than babies. So you know, I, I think I think that should be illegal. <laughs> in their world <laughs> I think I should be allowed to hit people who show me stuff like that that's, what? that's my what really? say? wait what'd you say you don't, you don't I really said, think I th- that I think I should be allowed to hit people who show me stuff like that hmm. because they're assaulting me yeah I could see that are you a violent person like your dad do you have a long history of beating people up and getting concussions um, no I don't have a history of it I, I have a history of violently suppressing those urges yeah your dad uh seems like 
he's become really mellow in the past few years. Is that true? Yes, he has. It's uh, it's been a very positive experience. Cool. We, What's uh, it we like? had a very we... strained, rela- strained relationship when I was younger, but it's gotten much better. Why? Were you rebelling against him and becoming like the head of the young Republicans at college or something? <laughs> no, I was an anarchist and he was a Republican. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. You you fixed him, not the other way around. <laughs> yeah. But... Uh, Wasn't he a Ron Paul supporter, like trying to get Ron Paul elected like 30 years ago or something? Yeah, well, I would assume so. That's what he said. I, I, I wasn't there at the time, so I don't know. Cool. Do you, um, get, do you get along now? Yeah, we do. We What's do. he like? I mean, I, I kind of like, I don't idolize people at all, but, you know, I almost like idolize him in a way. Like, I look at him as not a great man, and he's the guy that turned me on to why the great man theory is wrong. But I, um, I'm kind of agnostic, but I kind of look at him as a spiritual advisor or a spiritual, uh, like someone to look up to in a way. What's he like, man? Does he, um, does he fart? Is he human? Is he human? <laughs> does your dad has, fart? He has a tendency to go out into the garage. Uh, What's he doing know, out there? Moments. <laughs> For what? <laughs> he, uh, He'll just randomly be like, oh, excuse me, and walk out into the well, garage. Well, that's, you know, a lot of middle-aged men do that. I mean, that's what Hank Hill does, you know. His recreation yeah. is in his workshop. But is he, like, building birdhouses out there or what? Uh, No, he used to do a lot of stuff in his garage, but it's mostly just jam-packed full of stuff now, and you can't really walk around in there. He's yeah. just getting away from the kids. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Well, I mean, not anymore. There aren't really any kids there. Except when I show up in town and, you know, and am homeless and crash on their couch. <laughs> <laughs> That's the other thing I wanted to input. Uh, speaking as yeah, a input. current homeless person um, who is, in fact, you know, staying on people's couches and things for a living. Uh, yes, you can stay pretty much anywhere in the world if you clean up after yourself and leave after about three weeks and clean up after them too like that you can stay a little longer you know if they go to work and you come home and instead of you know ordering fried chicken and then eating it on the couch and passing it out you actually clean up more than just the mess you made and like clean their house people love that that's true you can stay well, with a person in, almost indefinitely if you clean up their house. <laughs> Without it's being like asked. any informal contract. There should be consideration, right? It can't be one-sided. So if you bring something to the table, I'm sure you can definitely find lots of opportunities. Uh-huh. Definitely. And, yeah. and you know, you have to be a good conversationalist, and you have to not make them feel like they have to babysit you at all times. Yeah. A good conversationalist knows when to not converse. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. Definitely. Yeah, because yeah. it's really annoying to have somebody there in your space, like yapping at you twenty four seven. Well, you know, Ben Franklin said, "Friends are like fish; they start to smell out. Guests are like fish; they start to smell after three days." <laughs> <laughs> That's about my limit. Three that. days. I can see that. Yeah, I have a tendency to uh, to couch jump a lot. I try not to stay in anybody's house too long. So, do you guys want to talk about this guy that got hauled away by the Secret Service and the FBI for posting things on Facebook? Well, you you told me you just found out what he posted. Yeah. Uh, What did he post? Yeah. I mean, I was really worried about this, and I'm less worried about it now. I mean, I don't think anybody should be arrested for anything they say ever, but I couldn't find his posts, but someone just sent me a link to them. Um, He's a decorated Marine named Brendan Robb, R-A-U-B, Brendan J. Robb who uh, was taken away Thursday or Friday night from his home by local police, FBI, and Secret Service and arrested supposedly for terroristic comments on Facebook. And I heard an interview with his mother last night and like no one's mentioned what he wrote. And to me, it sounded like, you know, he was, I mean, I've read other stuff he wrote that was linked in this article on Freedoms Phoenix and it sounded like typical you know, constitution loving, we need to get back to the way America was, you know, patriot, just mellow Christian stuff um, and nothing feisty. And I was thinking like, okay, if they took him away for that, we're all effed. But let me read some of his posts. This actually kind of makes me feel better because it's like, okay, he sounds like he's preparing for war. He's not just saying Obama's a big dumb, dumb head like we do, you know, like we're peaceful, like... (laughs) 
And this guy's a decorated Marine, which worried me too, because I was like, if they'll take away a decorated Marine, you know, ex-Marine or former Marine, they, they'd take us away quicker. But, uh, you know, he says, he has a picture of him with a rifle, and he said, this is my going to war profile pic. Then he says, death is nothing but to live. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, give me freedom or give me death. Sharpen my axe. It's time to sever heads. Uh, he says, you should understand in many things, let's see, struggle against destiny. Um, we'll find some more of this when we get back, but uh, the revolution will come, will be for me. Men will come to my door to pick me up and lead it. Uh, the revolution is here and I will lead it. Uh, hmm. You know, it, it sounds okay. like stuff, it's way beyond what we do. We don't do violent sounding stuff. This is violent sounding they're, they're stuff. They're war cries. He's, he's, yeah. They're war cries, basically. Yeah. And it could be figurative, but who knows? What's up, man? I well, the major reason I was calling was to say I finally got around to watching Guns and Weed. <laughs> cool. And first of all, I must say, Mr. Vidadi, you have got the worst Hindi accent I've ever heard in my life. I disagree Mr. because I know a guy in India who saw it and thought Nemo was Indian. Oh, really? Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. But, uh, yeah, it was, it was an interesting production, though it was a little, um discombobulated for lack of a better word okay how would you have made it better <laughs> well to tell you the truth I'd probably do exactly what you're doing now you know suggest so more actual actions as opposed to just uh, you know bringing up what the nature of the problem is well, also I was a constitutionalist when we made that Nima was already an anarchist but uh, I you know I would have made I would have had a different angle for a lot of it now but I kind of, we kind of were doing an overview. There was a lot to cover, too, man. A lot to cover. Yeah. And we wanted to make it funny and not be dry. So, you know. Well, there's certainly no shortage of dry documentaries on that subject floating yeah. around. Yeah. I know. Yeah. We wanted to be a little bit different. Yeah. But, uh, oh, I also would have uh, kept in more footage of that idiot who shot himself in the leg, uh, the DEA agent. Ah. He, what about that footage? Well, uh, the footage goes on. You know, he's trying to get order in the classroom, but it's not working. Basically, all you show in the film is just basically him going, I am the only one qualified in this room to bang. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, right. Well, that was pretty much uh, what I wanted to uh, call and say my thing about. Uh, seems to have an extra busy show today. Yeah. Sure is. Let's see if we're back on yet. So somebody's writing me and saying, yeah, we're back. And somebody's saying that uh, she was listening. I think she was listening to the wrong theme, the feed. I think she was listening to the Fiends feed, not the LRN feed. The person had said that she was hearing uh, us doing the commercials. Okay, probably. Yep, yep. okay. So, um, yeah, all right. Damn. Okay. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Diana Marsh. <laughs> I will write Ian now and say, oops, it was a mistake. Yeah. Who, who we got in line here? Who we got in line? Talk to us, sir. Yeah, well, still me, still Miles. Uh, the other okay. quick thing I wanted to mention was, you know how you have people call in and they're all anarchists and you can never find anyone to make any kind of a statist or even a minarchist argument? Well, I yeah. can make a minarchist argument to you. Well, okay. if, if only in terms of, uh, well, the subject of passports, that uh, the entire world, there's no way the entire world is going to go completely 100% anarchist all in one shot. And so you have, you're going to have countries that are in some ways anarchistic, in some ways not so anarchistic, and you're still going to have to have something like an office of passports probably set up on a voluntary basis. You know, you go in, you UN. pay your fee, you get your passport so you can still travel around the world. Well, why, why is that a minarchist uh, argument? If it's on a voluntary basis, um, and as long as there's no state involved, they're not being funded by tax dollars. You know, you go in, you pay the money for the passport, uh, and that's only to get into the countries that still have a government or yeah. a state. And if the part uh, of the I world where I lived became Libpair, why would I want to travel to somewhere that wasn't? <laughs> well, I live in Wyoming, and I, I, I won't go anywhere in America. I can't bring a gun legally. 
Well, <laughs> I, I kind of have a problem with that argument. Like, oh, I'll just stay here all the time. I mean, that that's you, Michael. Yeah. But there are people that that do want I'd to love travel to go to, to Europe, have family you know, in other places. My wife would really love to see Europe. I mean, all the books she reads, all the movies she reads, take place in historic Europe, and like. You know, I've stood and smoked a cigarette in the lobby of those churches in Prague. Like, she's only seen pictures of them. You know, she'd like to see them. I've passed out, you know, in front of Stonehenge and peed on it. She's never seen, she's only seen pictures of it, you know? Right, right. Yeah, well, I, I guess I don't see the need for the state there. Um, I mean, couldn't you just get a visa or some kind of document from, say we did have a world where there were some anarchist regions and some state regions. Um, if you want to go to the state regions, you would have to play by their game. So it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be anarchy there. So you'd have to play by their rules in order to visit. Um, but you'd be able to walk away from it. You don't have to visit. Well, I guess this gets into the nature of the disagreement between uh, a state as a non-voluntary and a voluntary deal where, you know, the lefty anarchist is basically a person who says there should be no property rights uh, and things like that, uh, as opposed to, you know, what you guys preach. But, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, I don't know, I guess I was kind of thinking about that in terms of uh, the state as being a voluntary deal, which... Uh, Never really thought about that before very much. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, if it's, if it's voluntary, it's it's not really a state, right? Um, I mean, the way I sort of define a state is the idea that there's a group of people that can control others um, without their consent. So a government that says, because 500 people voted this way, uh, you don't get to smoke weed, or you don't get to drive a car without having a driver's license, or you must remit this amount of taxes to us by force um, because we say so. That 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 to me is a state because um, you don't contract for those those kind of things. You don't voluntarily sign anything that says, yes, I will follow this. Uh, that was one of the things in the Daily Show book. Uh, the last book the Daily Show guys wrote, uh, they had a thing where they were talking about the nature of the social contract and how <laughs> you're born into it and you're not really made aware of its details until later in life, but you are forced to obey it or else. Yeah, yeah. I mean that that's that's it. That's it in a nutshell, right? I mean, and we've we've said it before. It's it's pretty much slavery, right? The 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 other big thing that it's that's in history that we think of that's a great example of the social contract is slavery. You were born into it. Uh, you never decided to pick cotton for the rest of your life and be owned by a slave master, but because you were born into it. People accept that as your birthright. Um, that's the social contract, and that's that's when people talk about that in government, you know, in schools. That's what they're talking about. You don't you don't have a decision. You don't get to opt out. You don't get to uh, pick and choose. It's just there. And so, if if you have a social contract, if you have a state, uh, that's that's involuntary. And and so, if you have a situation like you're saying where uh, you have passports that are voluntary and you decide to do it or not, uh, that I don't I wouldn't consider that a state kind of operation hey we got someone that is been trying to call in since the start of the show um can we wrap it up and get him in on here <laughs> he's he's pestering me you cool with Ready that up. a little bit <laughs> knives <laughs> knives call in soon knives. man thanks all right chandler call us we will not accept another call unless it's a hot chick before you call chandler uh so i want to talk a little more about this guy uh, cause this has really been bugging me. Like I had bad dreams about this last night. Um, you know, this guy that got taken away by the FBI and the, and the, the S secret service for posting stuff on Facebook. And he was posting cries to war, which, um, <laughs> I hate to say it, but it makes me feel better because he, he, he wasn't hauled away for saying like taxation is theft. You know, he got hauled away for saying, I'm ready. They're going to, the American revolution is going to start again. I'm, I'm going to lead it, you know, stuff like that. Um, which I think is just talking. And whenever people post stuff like that on my wall, I delete it. And if they do it again, I block them. And the reason is, and I've said this to people who've said, why'd you block me? Um, if I'm going to get my door kicked in, it's going to be for something I say, not for something you say. And if I'm going to get my door kicked in, it's going to be because what gets your door kicked in changes because I'm not saying anything that could get my door kicked in right now or even thinking anything to get my door kicked in. We're not violent people. Fiend phone. And, uh, Fiend phone. Do you concur, Nima? Fiend phone. Yeah, Fiend I mean, phone. completely. I, I don't think people should be hauled away Hang for on, that, Chandler. but... Um, that's not what we're doing. So yeah, it's it, it's not as much a chilling effect as you were worried about. You know, yeah. like 
like in England where you can just um, tweet or Facebook message anti-war stuff like F the yeah. troops. They're not pr- fighting for my freedom. They're just killing brown people. Um, it's not it's not that bad here yet. Yeah. So what's up, Chandler? You are the most um, persistent fiend that's ever tried to call in and we respect you for that. What's up, man? You mean the biggest pain in the ass? <laughs> <laughs> nah, man. We're, we're good. To, we had to hang up on people to get you on. What's up? What's hey, on uh, well, I just wanted to talk about uh, internet security a little bit. I, I really like the show you guys did. I think it was last week. So let me ask you first. Was was your friend Diana listening to the wrong feed? Were, are, have yeah, you been she, listening? Yeah. So we're not we're not being heard over the commercials, right? Right. Okay. No, she she clicked on the listen live on the the Fiend's website. Okay. That's why I asked okay. her guys about that. All right. So she okay. she was listening to the wrong feed and then the other guy that was confirming what she said just said he's really baked on marijuana. So we were we were relying <laughs> on wrong information and stoned information. I mean, I was sending emails like I was trying to call Ian like, "Hey man, get back to the station and fix it, you know?" Damn yeah. humans. Is that her in the background? <laughs> no, we got a family birthday party thingy out oh, here cool, and they're all cool. rocking outside cool so What's um up? yeah um i don't know i i have a friend who's been really harping on the internet security for about a year with me and i'm finally just starting to get into it and i do think it's really important i will say that uh, i did like bola vpn enough where i actually went out and paid for a, a subscription past the cool. trial you guys gave cool. me and it is awesome. cool one thing i would uh just bring to note though and i'm sure all the tech guys out there know this um when you use that it will you know mask your ip and all that stuff but it doesn't mask your machine id number i was wondering about that like is mac number given out by a lot of things to a lot of places i'm i'm not sure and i think actually i'm i may be wrong but there's a machine id number and then there's your mac address number and those are two different things because your right. Mac address oh, yeah, comes yeah, yeah, from yeah. your router. Yeah, yeah, and you know that's why I think people who really, really want tons of security get like computers that'd be the equivalent of buying, you know, an untraceable serial numbered gun. You know, <laughs> right? Well, you can get a Linux white box and just get on the ner- uh, the net with that. You know. Yep. Well, we're gonna keep you on for after we go sell some things here uh, for the last last segment. Computer security is good. You should also use two different browsers. One that's never. You should yep. use one that's never logged in, and uh, not Internet Explorer when you're using VPNs. Yeah, worms. But doing the same thing that uh, the raw milk riders did out in DC Saturday, and just doing it at our Capitol Park, our local park, and just getting people down there to you know exchange goods, foods, and do it all you know a voluntary and or free basis. Okay. So I'm okay. going to try to organize that. Kind of like an goes. anarchy, okay. kind of like an anarchy swap meet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I have, I have, uh, I have a uh, couple of friends that were like, "Oh well, we have to go to the state and get permission and do this and that." <laughs> no. <laughs> and I was like, uh, "Nope, nope, nope." That's we're kind just of the point, guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, that, that's yeah. awesome. Um, where where's that at geographically? Uh, it, I'd like to get it in Capitol Park in Augusta. It's the capital of Maine, and it's a big, big park right in front of the state building. So, okay, okay, yeah, I so think that's a great cool. idea. Um, but yeah, now so back uh, to what, what, what kind of? A- yeah, yeah. Go ahead on that. Well, that's sort of been our theme lately. Um, so, yeah, what 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 else did you want to say about internet security and how you feel about the VPNs? Well, I like the VPNs a lot, and I think it would be beneficial for more people to use them just and it goes back to that idea of even if you're not doing anything wrong more of us that make the state's job harder the better you know and uh, I, I want to start getting into the encryption in the emails um, I think that's really important I've looked into a few different things we have two have interviews you- coming up on Anarchy Gumbo the next two Saturdays they're interviews with guys who are experts on that yeah I we've also found um, We've also found a peer to be a uh, peer to peer thing that you can use for email uh, called retro retro share. Retro, that's funny. I was just going to ask you about that because I was on the mental militia forums today and I, I checked that out. I downloaded it, so I was wondering if you oh, guys so- had tried it out yet. Well, send us your uh, your PGP key and we'll add you in and do some chatting about it on it. Okay. 
trying yeah, it out. Yeah, I still got to figure out how to run it. I just set it up and generated my key and all that. So Where does your key know. show up? Someone walked me through it, and Nima can't find his. <laughs> well, I'm on a Mac, too, so it'll probably it's be It's pretty different. similar, but where did you find your key? Uh, well, I had when I installed the program and ran it the first time, it said, please generate, you know, type. It generated a, a key, and I had to type my password to confirm it. Ah, uh, Nima didn't and, do that, did you, Nima? No, mine did that, but I, I sent you what I thought it was. Yeah, Maybe you that sent me it. something that was like eight characters long. The key is like 400 characters long. Well, if you go on to the, um, the, the RetroShare Frequently Asked Questions Rick, uh, wiki, it, it tells you. I think it's under Add Something or Other. And when you okay. add friends, it'll show you. Your, your, it's a digital certificate, which is like your key, and you have to send that to your friends, and then you uh, verify okay. it. Yeah. Cool. So, uh, hey, have you guys checked out Bitwise yet? I know I've been pestering you about that. No, what is it? It's uh, an encrypted IM, oh. and it you can send files, you can do voice chats, and it's all encrypted. There's a free version, which is good. It, the free version has 128-bit uh, encryption, and if you want to pay, I don't remember how much it is, you can get like up to 512 bit encryption hmm. I think there's varying levels I we my friends and I just use the free version for now but you know, it's pretty good you know we have another VPN that's a sponsor now too that's actually cheaper and has uh, higher uh, bit rate encryption it's metropipe.net slash fiends really yeah so when yours runs out if you want to try that try it don't run them both at the same time and don't have the software for both running at the same time it can cause problems but but the metro uh, the other one v Bola has the advantage of having more servers yeah to choose from yeah yep. uh, and I usually just most of the time I just uh, do fully routed but I've noticed for a couple of things I've had to do specific service every once in a while I'll do a Canada server you know but um why for Canada? the most part because why not uh, yeah basically yeah I mean <laughs> there, there's you know different reasons geographic and stuff but I do like Canada's uh, it seems to run <laughs> A little bit faster. Isn't there part of Maine that wants to like secede America and join Canada? Oh, really probably. far up north near near the border. Yeah, the, yeah. There's a few people up there that do, and Quebec, which is right above us, they want to secede from Canada and be their own yeah. country. Well, I I am uh, English and French Canadian by derivation, so I guess that's in my blood. Yep. Yeah. Well, if you live in Maine, uh, you know a lot of people. A good chance is you you have. French Canadian and Indian far enough back. I mean, both sides of my family have have French I'm, Canadian. I'm the only person I know Indian. from upstate New York that like wasn't told as a kid that yes, you're great. You know, you're related to Pocahontas. Or, no, no. <laughs> yeah. I'm not Indian. Yeah, yeah. I don't of, think we have any of that. A lot of little girls are told that by their parents in those regions. For oh, some yeah. reason. That they're related that, to Pocahontas. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's that fairy tale complex thing. Aren't you, you know? Nima, part uh, Native American? Uh yeah yeah uh on my mom's side I'm part yeah, of you, you, like her <laughs> we did her we did grandma or, or her great grandma or something had a baby with a, a native yeah American. Did, didn't we do a cast about uh, having you apply for a casino license and starting the <laughs> meth and crocodile naughty nursey tranny hooker uh, free zone Some, autonomous something zone something to that effect yeah, yeah yeah that that was the fantasy but I think that was before we discovered crocodiles so we'll have to fold that into the business plan now. <laughs> That'd be a hell of a casino. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Not much for the be, uh, thing. Be good for business, too. I, I bet I bet when you're on Crocodile, you're pretty loose with your wallet, more so than alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> well, with your arms rotting off, you know, you don't really think for That's tomorrow. Me. Can't can't hold on to your wallet you physically. You, li you live for today. <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> excellent. Excellent. Um, In anything else? Russia, drug consumes you. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. I'll uh, I'll uh, let somebody else call in if they want. I just uh, I think you guys are right on with the uh, internet security and stressing that. I see a lot of people going in a lot of different directions, and I think that's something that all of us should incorporate, no matter what those directions are. I think and, they uh, should do what I do, which is just talk on Skype with your <clears throat> middle aged body showing with your shirt off, and then just no one wants to tap your phone calls. That's not a bad idea. That's what me and Eddie do. <laughs> Eddie Free do. Eddie looks better than me with his shirt off, though. Diana's calling. We're going to get Diana for one minute here, man. Get her apology. All right, later, guys. All right, Have a good day. <clears throat> get her apology. Diana, you've been a bad, bad girl. 
you messed us up, man. You, I was like calling Ian Freeman and saying, everything's messed up. What's going on? Uh, okay, what's up? Oh what's up, God. Diana? I am so sorry. I was calling to publicly apologize for my moment of panic. I don't know if you heard. I just got Chandler off really quick, and I said, Diana's calling to apologize. We're going to take this call. <laughs> <laughs> You're forgiven. Thank you very much. Love the show today, guys. You're hitting all the topics that I really wanted to, to you know, talk about. So it's very cool. I appreciate it. Excellent. All right. Excellent. Thanks for calling, Diana. All right, guys. Yeah, take right. care. Take care. Bye. We've had uh, <laughs> more women call in today than we have in the history of The Fiends. Oh, I guess so. Yeah, she's the We've third woman, huh? Yep, three women. Wow. Yep. In one show. Yeah, I That's like amazing. it. <laughs> yeah, and we've had a lot of people yeah. calling that we've talked to that we know, which is kind of cool. We like, want everyone like, to call like Nikki in, said, more, more vagina is always a good thing. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> vagina, 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 vagina. Come on, chant it with me. No. And then, then the conservatives were yelling, "Penis, penis, penis." <laughs> <laughs> oh, all those conservatives with penis in their mouths. <sighs> Santorum. Shame. America's <laughs> covered in Santorum. Covered in Santorum. Wasn't that the name of an episode? <laughs> it was. Well, it this was, one. Uh, <laughs> a great episode pick, too. It was uh, Santorum with a, uh, what was it? A microphone as a, a penis. microphone sticking naked. in his mouth out of someone's pants. Yeah. 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 Today's episode is called Stacking Mad Bitcoin Bitches. So if you're on Bitcoin, send us some Bitcoin. I don't think we got any Bitcoin donations during, well, my wallet's still updating, so we don't know yet. <laughs> and if you send All us right. Bitcoin, if you send us Bitcoin, it's anonymous. So if you want us to know and or say you sent it, send an email and say what time and date you sent it, because otherwise we're not going to know who sent it. I got th four donations and th three of them I don't know who sent well, that's fine. If people want to stay anonymous when they're donating to the fiends, we've got yeah. no problem with that. But just letting people know if they're new to it, we don't know who sends it. It's not like PayPal, which is the point of it. Yeah. But you know, I, yeah, I kind of think they know that if they're that into Bitcoin <laughs> that they're donating through Bitcoin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what are you going to do today, Nima? The rest of your day, other than talk to me? On uh, you the know, phone? I, I'm I'm just, I'm still recovering from from my trip to the Guadalupe Mountains, so I'll yeah. probably just uh, just hang out and and have a nice vacation from my vacation and then um, start working on fiend stuff again on Monday yeah that's what you said the last eight vacations when you got back it is <laughs> I mean I've basically been like running the thing all summer and then you come in to do the show and then I don't talk to you for two weeks <laughs> yeah sorry about that well summer's almost over so uh, I don't know Maybe yeah but then winter sports come and you're, you're gonna be like going to Park City to snow or to ski or something <laughs> all right it's been a good fiend maybe man. It has been a good fiends. Thanks, Michael, as always. Yeah. Yeah. Worms. worms. I'm a worm eating statist, apparently. <laughs> the fake worm eating statist. <laughs> yep. Worms. 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 Worms.